Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. This is Dan Alford with ARC Specialties. Today's episode is on resistance welding. The most common use for resistance welding is automotive industry, joining the sheet metal together. If you've ever seen the videos of the robots spot welding cars, you'll frequently see sparks flying off of the welder. That's a bad sign. The metal that was in the car chassis is now on the floor. So spot welding is typically associated with high production volumes, but not very high quality. Here at Arc Specialties, we've taken the process and applied it to precision manufacturing. In this case, we're making sand screens for the oil industry. So in the early 90s, when Arc Specialties was just me working out of my garage, I'd take on any job available. One of these was maintaining sand screen machines here in Houston for various companies which were resistance welding these screens. All these older machines were based on old technology. They had a fixed ratio of rotation to translation, and they were running line frequency resistance welders. I always figured that I could come up with a better machine if I ever had the opportunity, and that arose in the early 90s when much of the sand screen capability was bought up by a single competitor. So when we were given a blank sheet of paper to come up with the next generation sand screen machine, we jumped on the opportunity. We applied advanced controls, including electronic gearing. We went to mid-frequency welders. We closed the loop to control the gap. We invented a low inertia weld head to improve weld follow and eliminate the sparks that I was talking about. This all resulted in a patent. Many of our customers respect the patent. The others just know that we can make welds at 100 welds per second and hold a gap of plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. And that's what really matters. Around that same time, the global need for sand screen went up dramatically for two different reasons. One is they went from vertical drilling to horizontal. So our pay zone lengths are much longer and we needed much more sand screen per well. And also up in Canada, for the oil sands. There's two ways to extract the oil sands. One of them is strip mining, but that's environmentally destructive. The other way is a steam assisted gravity drainage method, which uses sand screens. Because of this increased global need for sand screens, we not only started to build these resistance welding machines, but all the ancillary equipment. First step is you have to cut the rib wires. So we have rib cutters. The next step is if you're wrapping on pipe, you may want to sand the pipes. We have pipe sanders. If you're wrapping over pipe, you need to drill holes in the pipes. We build multi-spindle drilling systems. And after you drill the pipe, you must deburr them. So we built deburring systems. And then after you make the sand screen, you have to test it. We need to confirm that our tensile strengths of our wells are in the 800 pound range. So we built tensile testers. But the most critical item on inspection of a sand screen is the gap between the wires. This determines the filtration of any given sand screen. So we're building an optical gap measuring system because the gap tolerance on premium screens is plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. So after the screen is welded and inspected, there are a few more operations. We have to cut to length, we have to weld the end zone, and in some cases we stuff the screen over a perforated pipe. But let's get back to the actual process of wrapping and welding a sand screen. We're not using a round wire. It's a trapezoidal wire they call a house wire. And the logic is they want the gap at the surface of the screen to be smallest and then taper more open towards the inside. This is to prevent plugging. You have to understand that the sand screen is not the actual filter. It's just holding the gravel pack. The gravel pack is what does the filtering of the oil. In resistance welding, we have a term called electrode follow. This is how quickly the electrode will react and follow the part as it compresses during the weld. If it doesn't follow quickly, we'll get an arc. And on sand screens, if you see the sparks, you've made a bad part. So to improve the electrode follow on our machines, we did two things. We minimized the inertia of the system because this electrode is moving up and down with each weld and we're doing over 100 welds per second. So it has to be very responsive. And the second thing is we had to eliminate all the stiction. Stiction is what you get when you go from dynamic friction to static friction and back to moving again. These transitions from static to dynamic friction within a pneumatic or hydraulic cylinder create load peaks which cause variations in electrode force. Our solution was to go to a pneumatic bladder system to apply electrode force. This completely eliminates the static dynamic variation, but it creates other problems because air bladders are inherently nonlinear. So we have to close the loop with a load cell. It added to the complexity of the control system, but the resultant welds are superb. When you're using line frequency welding systems, you're limited to 60 welds per second, and we wanted to push the envelope. We're now over 100 welds per second using mid-frequency resistance welding systems. But the real challenge was the dimensional accuracy requirements for premium screen. 
They're looking for plus or minus one thousandth of an inch. That's one third of a human hair. The problem is the best wire that you can buy today is seven tenths of a thousandth accurate. That means 70% of your required accuracy has already been used up by the wire. And so the technology that we used was to actually measure this wire as it was flowing into the machine. And since we have electronic gearing between the headstock and the travel unit, we can change the pitch on the fly. Pitch is not part of the spec. So if we see the wire trending wider, we automatically increase the pitch. If we see the wire trending thinner, then we decrease the pitch. We certainly don't recommend it, but we found we can control gap to plus or minus one thousandths of an inch using wire, which varies by two thousandths of an inch or twice our tolerance. This has been a fun industry for us to get into. It all started out with resistance welding, turned into drilling machines, cutting machines, and inspection machines. And in the process, it's given us an opportunity to travel around the world, install these factories, and meet a lot of good people. So if you think you might have an application for resistance welding, but you didn't realize you could make 100 wells per second or hold plus or minus 1,000th tolerance, contact me. We have a welding research lab just for this type of opportunity. We look forward to posting new episodes of the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of ARC Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.